business. Since Sri Lanka gained independence, voting has been the method of how we elected our leaders. Every leader who has taken over this country has done just that. They went to the people and played their case. You do a good job, people keep you in power. If you don't, you are sent home. That was even evident to a great president like Mahindra Rajapaksa. Although he won the war, the people of this country chose to send him home. Why? Because he didn't do what the people wanted in the latter part of his second term. It proved that the people of this country truly have the power. They used it in a manner that's superior to any. However, that power was continually displayed in a democratic manner. It was acceptable to all, even all over the world. But last year, a new president took form. This was aided and abated by the self-proclaimed champions of democracy. Was this a new form of voting? Was this a new method of electing a leader as per the norms of the world? Of course not. But the stage was set for these individuals to violate the very sanctimonious purity of our constitution. A leader elected by the highest votes of this country was chased out, we are told, by the very same people who led the insurrection that it was the need of the hour. And everyone in the country agreed on it. But what is the evidence of that? In any court of law, we can prove that the former president was indeed the victor who gained the highest number of votes for the office of president in 2019, because those ballots still exist. The number of individuals who came to storm the president's house, any donkey on the planet would say that despite the numbers being high in attendance, it does not overshadow the 6.9 million voters of, or even a friction of it. Then we are told, no, 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 no. We need to believe that it reflects more than 6.9 million uh, people's dissent. And it was represented there. Can it be approved in a court of law that the 6.9 million uh, people participated in that? And it was indeed their will to chase the president? So then, are we to be okay with the fact that the people's verdict at the polls were discarded due to the hateful needs of a few? Of course, the argument that people all over the nation were unhappy with the former president has some truth to it. Good. The only way we could have tested that theory is to call for a referendum under Article 85 of the Constitution. Yes, our Constitution was even clear as to how we should deal with this matter when the people of this country aren't happy with their leaders. But the action that was carried out doesn't uh, prove that it was the will of the people, rather it was the will of a selected few. I can for a fact say that the will of the people in that awful hour was demanding the former president to do his job and alleviate the suffering of his citizens. Simply put, do what you just promised. Now in America, after the January 6th riots, we know what happened. That incident was very similar to what happened here. American lawmakers swiftly moved towards accountability. Whether you agree or not, there was a process to determine the culprits of that day. Some of are in jail and some are pending investigations. It's past one year since our July 9th. None of the lawmakers, no any NGO for that matter, who claims to be on the side of democracy is calling for any investigation or for any accountability process. And it's hilarious to see that when America is doing their best to punish its unlawful citizens, the American ambassador in Sri Lanka, for that matter, calls them peaceful protesters. We now know that some use the real pain of the people for their gain and manage to become rich. Several were caught recently and official investigations reveal how much money they managed to make uh, during the whole unrest. But are we punishing the real kingpins, or are we, as usual, going after the small fish? One year down the line, we need to ask why most are silent on accountability to find out what really happened to this country. Listening to the silence itself tells an alarming story about the fate of this nation. We'll be right back.